Hello there and welcome to Genesis Models. In this video we're going to be doing a tutorial. It's going to be a tutorial on doing some pre-shading, a nice bit of basic spraying. So let's get down to it. So I've just gone off and added some XF1 and some homebrew thinners. If you want to go check that video out, please do. It's on the Genesis Models website. Great saver there. Everybody loved it. Um, we've got our um, what is this? This is the Iwata HPBH. So we're going to be able to do some nice fine line work. It's got, I think it was like a 0. Uh, what 1.5 or um, a 2 uh, mil in here so very very fine needle in here it's going to allow us to get nice and close now we're just going to test our uh, mixture here to make sure it's just right we're looking for quite a nice feathered spray pattern which you can just just see there right and then what we want to do is just press down the trigger right and then slowly put it back and as we slowly put it back we're going to get paint right and it's that point where you just see that paint come out that's our biting point this is um one of these kind of crucial sort of skills we want to sort of get down um straight away is just holding that biting point so we can hold that paint just coming out at the right right time we don't want to put it all the way back and have loads and loads of paint come out right because we're going to be getting in close and doing some pre-shading all right um, so once we've got our biting point we can then move this around and you can have a little play but really you want to get onto the model uh, to, to really sort of see how it's all going as you can see i've been playing around a little bit already um, now what we're going to do right, is we're going to come in maybe somewhere in the regions of maybe between a centimeter or two centimeters away from the model and we're going to begin to hold that biting point and just follow around the recess panel lines like so right now what you're looking for hopefully is that with your paint mixture right you're getting you know good coverage like this you don't really want to be going over twice to be fair right one coat pretty much is all you want to have but you want the pattern to be feathered you don't want it to be speckly right so if you have say your spray pattern's a bit speckly, right? You might want to add a little bit more thinners. Don't be tempted to go off and whack your air pressure way, way up, right? You don't want it to be that much, right? Um, no more than 20 PSI is probably all you want with that, right? You may find that maybe the paint mixture's a bit too thin and you're not getting good coverage. So again, you know, just add a little bit more paint. Now with this, pre-shading you don't have to worry about being neat hopefully you can sort of see here i'm not like massively neat it's not all square and sharp and straight right it all adds to the weathering of all of this right i mean if you have it looking unnatural by being all straight and square right it's not going to help the weathering we want it to the weathering to look um, weathered basically which isn't normally or isn't all straight and uniform and all that kind of stuff um, I will say as well I mean sometimes you may find that the weather is hot right so you might want to add maybe a little bit of retarder to the mixture of your color cup maybe just one drop if it's really really hot um, I will say as well that if I just take off our little nozzle cap guard here, right? Just periodically, just kind of cleaning your needle just here, because that can build up with dried up paint, right? And that can then sort of mess up your spray pattern, start kind of being a bit speckly. Yeah, so do that now and then, because you're going to be, you know, especially a big model like this as well, right? We're going to be do it, holding this biting point for quite some time now once i've gone off normally and sort of done a lot of the pre-shading as you can see just here i like to sort of try and maybe break up all these kind of blunt, blunt uh, so sort of these flat spots as you see just here with maybe a little bit of mottling this is where i'll do the whole biting point thing again but i'll kind of just wiggle this on really fast right so that the um so we say the intensity of the black isn't as 
strong as what's on the um, recessed panel lines as you can see just there it just kind of breaks things up it adds a bit of a mottling effect to it and i'll do that kind of all over the model as well i've um, just done a little bit of a mistake here deliberately just to show you that we can mess up because when we come around to putting the top coat on top of this we will be able to kind of blend everything in and i'll just show you even mistakes we can sort out as well now i will um, also as well as we go along with doing this pre-shade and you don't want to be um, staying in one place for too long if i sort of stay in this one place just here Right, eventually what's going to happen is the paint's going to build up and we're going to get what's called um, a spidering effect. So as we get our biting point, right, we do want to just keep on moving. Right, it's, it's fine to actually go over um, one line more than once. Right, I mean making something a bit darker and blacker, no problem just doing that as well or even lightly going over a place right to maybe make that recessed panel line maybe look a little bit less dirty it's all about being random um, not so neat and not to worry about this stage but there you go that is kind of trying to get that pre-shading going down so i'll get that all down and move on to the second stage of pre-shading so there she all is looks quite interesting with all that pre-shading on there so i've got a couple of examples to show you on here of sort of getting this just just right now i am switching my airbrush to a 0.4 mil needle bigger color cup because we're we're doing more coverage kind of spraying there um, so first off we are going to be using really good color match actually for these fa18s is um, h307 we're going to be concentrating on this color just here um, so we're going to be using obviously um, the hobby color finish right the right finish for the right job i mean yes i would kind of you could get away with using um, homebrew thinners but i do find with these ones by mr hobby there they kind of want their their own thinners in all fairness all right so i'm just gonna not pour but kind of i like to use the paintbrush in all fairness let's get you on camera a bit better than that I do yeah as i say i do like to use the paintbrush it kind of just mixes it as we go and it might take a little bit longer but i find it does mix it a little bit better with that mixed now right hopefully we've got a nice 50 50 mix but we'll do a very very quick sort of test spray of this kitchen paper towel just to see how we're sort of spraying out and that does seem to be quite nice and feathered so we're going to bring in the model now and just shoot straight onto this uh, what should we do should we have this nice little wing just here with our big blemish to show you how to sort that out well for starting off we just want to kind of go nice and light with this so i'm just going to do that usual light misty coat all right so it's just kind of going down we're not really seeing it very much it's just allows all our other coats to nicely stick to the model so i've done a nice big chunk of this model there with that light misty coat we can just cut to air just to dry it off pretty sort of quickly as you can see there i feel like that's a little bit spluttery maybe it just needs a little bit more thinners all right so i'm just gonna add a little bit all right don't be afraid to add a little bit all right the first the first coat you haven't got to really worry too much about right i mean it's when we get down to those second and third coats where we've got to be careful about not killing off all our pre-shading now just mix that now whenever you mix in your color cup you do want to um, spray a little bit through right only because you know there's going to be a little bit of an unmixed bit in the reservoir just there all right so now we can do our normal coat this is where it kind of gets a bit more interesting with seeing the colors now so now i'm going to do a normal light coat so we're going to actually see some coverage come down on this model now it's going to look a little bit wet but it's not going to be like pooling or looking really sort of you know overboard wet just make sure we get those leading edges as well get the end bit just there um also a bit of vortex area potentially here so don't try and spray in that sort of direction maybe sort of 
try and let's get you on camera so you can see but try and get it um, so we're not creating a vortex so I'm going to come in and say this angle just here Because with vortexes, what they do is they kind of create this vortex and it kind of dries the paint and you end up getting rough, rough surfaces. So potential area just there. But as you can see from that first coat, this is kind of like what pre-shading is all about. You can see how that black paint is just coming through. Well, it's coming through quite a bit at the moment still, but it's just coming through. And this is where we're going to get all our weathering and making our colour look a bit more interesting than just this flat grey that we're putting down. Now, um, we'll just let that dry a little bit, right, because um, when it comes to pre-shading, right, we could put like one, two more coats on this and we've killed off, completely covered up all this black pre-shading. So, always good, So that's my phone, always good to go off and um, add a little bit more thinners, right, to make the paint more transparent right if we make the paint a little bit more transparent yes okay this means that maybe it's going to take us four or five um coats to completely kill off the pre-shading but we don't want to kill the pre-shading off so you know giving us you know more control over how much paint we put down by thinning this down allows us to keep that pre-shading coming through just the right amount so yes i've just added some more thinners right we've made this that little bit more transparent the paint all right i'm going to blast through again a little bit because if you remember there is that little reservoir down by the needle end all right so we want to blast that through so this should be now thinner paint so shouldn't get as much coverage so we should be able to control how this goes down so here is the second coat I'm just whacking on top now, real nice and quick how that goes down, right, that's a good coat that one is. Now what you're going to see, right, is that now is just showing that pre-shading just come through. Now it's a little bit deceiving sometimes, you've got to allow the paint to dry, right, because sometimes it looks like you've got it just, just right, you've got it just, just perfect, um, or maybe, oh no, I've killed off too much of the pre-shading, uh, but when the paint dries, the pre-shading does come back through a little bit, so be warned on that, always kind of make sure that you let your coach dry so that you can sort of see how it's going. Now what you can see, um, hopefully you could see, um, I mean this paint's a little bit wet so I'm probably best letting it dry. But see our little mistake there, that big blob right there? Well this is where you could come in with maybe a little bit of, you know, a bit of close in spraying. Right, so we could actually maybe just target this area with our coat, maybe just getting a little bit close. And hopefully as you can see, even mistakes like that we can just come in and give it a little bit more paint than everywhere else on the model. Right, maybe try and go with the shapes of the pre-shading you've done just to kind of, you know, kill it off in a nice way so maybe still get that panel line kind of pre-shading come through just there. And hopefully as you can see, that now has kind of basically removed that. But we'll let the paint dry because it could come back and we'll kind of keep applying coats. And there you have it all nicely um, pre-shaded. Hopefully you can just see how it's just coming through. You don't want it to be something that comes out too much in your face. You may find the odd little spot here and there that is maybe a little bit too dark. So just don't feel too shy about just coming in. You know, and just covering up that little bit of pre-shading that's maybe a little bit too dark or any of those mistakes like I've shown you. We had that big mistake there, you know, just coming in a little bit tight and just um, um, sorting them out by just adding a bit more. I mean, maybe we've got a bit of a, too much of a squiggle going on there. I don't quite like that. I don't think, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but a little bit of a blast over that just to knock that back, feather it in a little bit more. Um, you know, and that's what you want to do, just kind of play around with it, look at it, really sort of study uh, and make sure that, you know, you haven't got any sort of too much of a dark spot going on. Don't worry if it's maybe a little bit flat. I mean, there's other stages in spraying where we do like bleaching and post shading and we can do fine spraying to kind of like if you've killed off your pre-shading a little bit too much in some spots or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, there you go. That is pre-shading. 
and so hopefully you've enjoyed that tutorial if you want to check out some more please go check out the genesis models website but as always until next time my name is bobby Ward, doing this genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed